Well, we've got John Lamb down here with Kelly Stewart. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Signal, sorry guys. John Lamb down here with Kelly Stewart. We're down here at the Federal Courthouse. We've got you an update today on the detention hearing. It's far from over yet. We're probably going to have a really long day. Um, we've got a lot of information to go over with you. Um, we're going to try to remember to do a couple of announcements before we're totally done here. But um, we'll start off. Kelly was in the courtroom today when, um, uh, in Cliven's detention hearing. It was denied right off the bat. We didn't even get a chance to really litigate it much at all. She just denied it. So Cliven is not going to get out at this time, um, at least not before trial. The trial is going to start. One of Cliven's daughters, it became a very emotional moment. His oldest daughter today uh, broke down and um, she was just obviously upset at the allegations that the prosecution brought against him, saying that he was not eligible for this uh, uh, pre-trial release. And, go yeah, ahead. And, and you know she actually only became upset after they were removing her from the courtroom so she did not have any explosions in the courtroom uh, before they tried to signal her to be removed simply because she was nodding her head no she was nodding her head no because lies were being spoken uh, from the judge uh, the judge wasn't speaking about the alleged ac um, accusations against Clive and Bundy she was saying because Clive and Bundy is willing to threaten federal officers and is willing to assault federal officers, which we all know he hasn't gone to trial. So how do we know if he did? That's for a jury of their peers to decide, not for the judge to decide. So that's really when Sheree shook her head no. She was not trying to have an outburst or, or do anything that was you know, going to cause problems for her family. She just heard lies and her body responded naturally with, no, he, he didn't do those things. He didn't harm federal officers. And um, that's when they removed her and she did um, speak truth in the courtroom, just like a treason Bob did months back when he yelled treason from the courtroom. Sharif brought some of the first truth to the courtroom uh, from the public's perspective that the judge is lying, um, that her father has harmed nobody. He would not harm anybody. He has never harmed anybody. That these accusations that are being brought by the prosecution and confirmed by the judge are lies. And she stated that very clearly on her way out the door, and she is indefinitely removed from the courtroom. She cannot come back. You know, I, I didn't hear nothing of her at all, no outburst at all from her, until the marshals actually surrounded her. So that, 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 that part of the hearing was kind of over with. And one of the marshals sitting up front just noticed her body language shaking her head. And i never seen this. And I never, the courtroom was obviously uh, peaceful, and the marshals actually went up to her, grabbed her, and brought her out and that's when she actually bursted out crying and saying what uh, her opinions were of this court and this judge. And you know when they removed her from the court I did wait a second but had to get up and follow her out because we could hear her still out in the hallway and the marshals blocked me at the door and said no you do not need to go out there and I said move I'm going out there she needs a witness and I said you can follow me if you want but move and he did move and let me go out but, um, you know, that's so interesting that, that she would be out there alone and that they would be trying to isolate her from, from having support. Uh, you know, I just wanted to be there as a witness. There was many marshals around her and she was very, very upset. Uh, but they clearly did not want anybody around her when they were dealing with her out in the hallway. Out right at the moment, Ammon Bundy, when we left the courtroom, he had been on the stand. He had got up to testify on his own behalf in this detention hearing. And that's where we left the courtroom. That detention hearing for Ammon has been uh, quite long this morning. Cliven's was real short. Ammon's has been lengthy. The, the government and the defense team is both arguing back and forth here. They are um, some heated uh, discussions back and forth between them. Even the prosecutor, Daniel Sheese, pointed at Dan Hill and accused him of being young and ignorant about his filings and how bogus his um, his motion was for the reasons that Ammon Bundy should be released here on pretrial de uh, pretrial release and um, trying to prove that that he lied in these motions. There was nothing about in these lies at all. This these motions from Dan Hill stated that this, Ammon has never been convicted of anything yet. He is innocent until proven guilty proven guilty. He ha was not proven guilty in Oregon. He was not, uh, hasn't been proven guilty here. Daniel Seish brought up that he has been found guilty of 11 uh, charges 
while he's been detained and corrupt. Disciplinary charges. Disciplinary charges. And he asked Ammon that question. And Dan Hill objected to it, but Ammon was allowed to go ahead and answer. And he says, well, the prison told me they were not disciplinary. But now I'm being accused by the prosecution of disciplinary that they, they, it's not supposed to be disciplinary yeah. actions. And you know, they're trying to bring those things up to discredit Ammon to say if he can't follow the rules of the jail, how is he going to do this? But here's the big kicker. He never committed to follow any rules when he got to the jail. He never committed to follow any rules for body cavity searches, to have his rights violated, to be denied access to his attorney, to be denied access to his legal material. He never agreed to that and made the commitment saying, I will follow these rules. Here in this courtroom today, he is saying, I will follow the rules of both state and federal that are put on me, and I will, I will honor those. And he said, it is my word. My word is why I will honor those, because I'm telling you I will honor those. And the prosecution keeps wanting to go back to Pahrump, as though when he you know, was arrested, as though he somehow gave his word that he would allow those guards to, to violate him the way that they have been violating him at both you know, Henderson and out at CCA Southern Nevada Detention Center. And what was brought up today, he has never been, uh, uh, he wasn't, hasn't been convicted of being violent in jail or, or a, a policy there. He has just simply told them, I will not comply. You take the clothes off of me if you want to do this. I'm not going to fight you. So he just hasn't obeyed their orders by, by, um, by, by just helping them, helping them violate, him. violate him. That's right. She's def they're definitely trying to paint the picture that, that Ammon shouldn't be uh, granted pretrial release, but the only two reasons he can be denied is because he's a threat to the public or because he's a flight risk. And yet, we had the judge multiple times talking about, um, as she's slumped over in her chair, you know, again, anyway, multiple times saying things like, well, what if people, what if people come to your house and they have alcohol? And you say, and, and of course the audience laughs because the Ammon Buddy doesn't drink. These men are, are devout LDS Mormons. They don't drink, you know, they don't do drugs. And, and yet she's saying, well, what if somebody brings you alcohol? And I understand that he's willing to answer those questions, but at the end of the day, none of those things matter. Is he a flight risk and is he a danger to the community? Not will he drink and get himself in trouble with probation services. If he does, he obviously gets taken back into custody. Those aren't grounds to keep somebody in jail because they might go out and drink when they're told that they can't drink. Oh, one thing. Dan Hill and his legal team, uh, Rick and Morgan, pulled up some great arguments for his release. I was so proud of them. They cited all kinds of case law where murders have been granted pretrial release. Federal, murders. federal murder cases. Federal murder cases have been granted pretrial release, and he said, my, my defendant has no criminal record. He's harmed nobody. Um, clearly, there's grounds here for, for release. I thought that was good. That they the only criminal out. record they're allegated here is that he has committed crimes in Trump while being incarcerated the last two years. That's the only crime that he has ever been found guilty of. And even those are not violent, aggressive uh, crimes. They're just, uh, you know, him not complying with helping them sexually violate him. So after our break here, we're going to be back in uh, court for the rest of the day. It could be quite lengthy. It might be even go after 5 o'clock tonight the way that it looks. Uh, we have, um, we're going to finish up with Ammon. Hopefully we'll get an answer today and he'll get released. Uh, that's what we're all praying for. Uh, next will be Ryan Payne. He has a detention hearing at her also today. And then last will be Ryan Bundy. So we're praying that the judge has a soft heart here and lets all three of those individuals go. We do want to make one point that Jason Woods, Micah McGuire, Dave Bundy, Mel Bundy, some of these attorneys, Joe O'Shaughnessy, Joe O'Shaughnessy all these attorneys showed up today in support of the other defendants that are still being held in Trump. Um, they don't even have a trial date set yet. They're just being deta detained indefinitely. Um, their motions of, the, of, of being joined today was totally denied. And um, the judge says you can file another motion, but you can't join in this motion for those detainees to be uh, be released. So they're still going to be Yeah, she fine. even went to the extent to talk about Oregon in her answer, saying, well, it's different because these guys, you know, they were in Oregon and they things that made no sense. He was saying, I'm here on behalf of my, these defendants and we want to we wanna verbally join, file a joiner to uh, to be a part of this detention hearing. And, and she, she, at the end of it, just denied that outright. We'll make two quick announcements here. Jerry DeLumis, he has a birthday coming up November 25th. And um, if anybody can send um, him birthday cards, 
information. He's being held out in Massachusetts, and um, we'll try to post that address just shortly. Daryl Thorne also has a birthday coming up here on the 12th of this month, and um, I've talked to him multiple times. He could sure use letters of encouragement right now, a birthday card, whatever you can get over to him. He is being held in Portland, Oregon. So those are two of the announcements. We have some um, sentencing hearings next week uh, in Portland, Oregon. For anybody who can show up there, it would be great if they could. Uh, Dwayne Emmer, um, he could use your support over there. We've got, um, what's that? Jake Ryan, Daryl Thorne, Jace, uh, John Richtimer. I don't know what all their dates are right off the top of my head. 14th through the 21st. We've got quite a few. Um, sentencing dates for those guys. So if you can show up in Portland, I may make it over there. I can't promise just yet. It depends on travel plans. Being here in Las Vegas, I may not be able to make it over there in time, but I'm going to try to make it to a few of them if I can because they're kind of spread out over 10 days' time. And then we have Seattle on the 20th for Skylar Barbeau's release. So people can make it to that. I'm sure I'll be uh, in Portland for the 14th for the 21st um, sentencing. And my goal is to also make it to Seattle, but it's it gets tough getting all over the place, so if you guys can show up. Um, anybody wants to take on any of these people individually and commit to them and start reporting on them and letting people know what's going on with them, um, please do that. Just tag us and we'll get it shared. But there's so many people right now with so many needs um, that it's it's pretty overwhelming to, uh, to meet on all of them. I do want to point out what these guys are willing to comply with or give consent to in order to be released. They found a house here in Vegas uh, within 15 minutes of the courthouse, a four-bedroom house from a retired Metro officer who was committed to watch them and have them in his home. He was in court today. He was in court. Uh, they agreed to wear the ankle monitors. They agreed not to communicate with the public unless it was through their family. They agreed not to come and go as they please, but rather be on house arrest. Um, not to have visitors at the house. Of course, no drugs and alcohol, no firearms. Um, you know, to attend all of the hearings. But you know, they're they're really stepping out. They're saying. We want to fight this battle. We want to make this work. We'll stay close to the court. Um, Ammon said that if the pretrial detention services want to show up at any time, of course, they're welcome to. If the judge was saying, well, what if your ankle monitor isn't working and we have to check it? Are you going to not comply and say, well, I'll stand here, but I won't help you? So again, she's trying to take things that were more moral and sexual violations that they were protesting in the jail, and she's trying to twist that and say, now what if you don't comply with the ankle bracelet? When they really weren't in jail not complying with simple things like an ankle bracelet, they were simply saying, just because you told me to take off my clothes doesn't mean I can help you do it. That's a moral violation to me and a Fourth Amendment violation. I've done nothing wrong to warrant this search, so if you're going to strip me with a gun to my head, you're going to do it on your own. It really had nothing to do with them just being stubborn on their principles. One of the questions the prosecution did ask on that line was, are you willing to set aside your morals or your principles um, if we let you out? So pretty much making them uh, say they don't have principles or any yeah. principles they have to set them aside. But what Ammon replied with was that he would fought, he would follow all orders of the, the court and that he would follow all federal and um, state laws as well. So they asked him, well, what if the prosecution is getting so dirty? They're saying, well, what if we go in? What if the BLM shows up to round up your cattle while you're on pretrial release? What are you going to do about that? Are you going to come and stand with your mom? I mean, they're really going below the belt here trying to get him to say anything to get him to, um, to be held. And his answer was, that if it, if it was within his uh, right or his agreement with pretrial services, that he would show up and peaceably assemble, kind of like he did before. And if they he told wouldn't break him not any to, laws. he wouldn't do it. Yep. They, they, he said, but if I'm not allowed to, then I won't go. And they said, do, you, do we have your word? He said, yes, you have my word on that. So. Well, we have um, Jason Goodman all the way from New York, right? And he's came, uh, I think this is his last day here. I got to meet him a little bit yesterday. It's been an awful tea down here, but I don't know if you have any questions or want to say anything here. Well, one of the things that came through here in the live comments, people were saying that even after he was convicted, Jeffrey Epstein spent less time in jail for admitting to having sex with children than the Bundys have spent just awaiting trial. Ammon and Ryan announced that in Harump, they were wait, wait, facing... Wait, sorry, someone just interrupted the stream. Sorry. <coughs> Sorry, we just had a brief interruption to the stream. So the point was that Jeffrey Epstein spent less time in jail 
for having sex with children right. and that Bundy's Model having it just around. awaiting trial. Yeah, Evan and Ryan uh, noted that out in Pahrump they were facing the longest sentence of anybody there. The longest sentence even for second degree murder was 25 years and they were facing a longer sentence and they were in the maximum security um, area with rapists and murderers and here they've never harmed a hair on anybody's head. Now I've never met Ryan, I hadn't actually seen him before yesterday, but he looked like he had been he looked like he had some injuries. Is that anything that happened in jail? Uh, not, not that you can see physically. He does have a gunshot wound from when he was in LaBoy's truck. Um, his facial injuries are from an accident when he was seven years Got old. It. Yes. Got it. He was run over by a truck uh -huh. when okay. he was a child. Okay. So he lost all feeling in half of his face. Boy, tough guy. He's a tough guy. Ryan's kicking butt in that courtroom. He's really dominating it. And then you put Ammon Bundy up on the witness stand and you finally have truth being spoken in a courtroom that has heard nothing but lies and slander for way too long. Ryan so. sounded like a lawyer. Yep. Yes, he does really good. Yep. Yeah. Similar to the last trial when Eric Parker got to take the stand and you finally had truth coming out even though his truth was silenced and he was kicked off with his own witness stand testifying for himself. But We did read off of so Eric Parker and Scott Drexler's names were brought up today. We read off of their pre-trial release um, sheets, Agreement. agreements and stuff. We read off of those today for these guys. So that stuff was all brought up today about, about the Asking if they would comply with even the agreement that Eric and Scott had. They were just going through everything. Is there anything they've missed that, um, you know, that they could throw at them to try to trick them into saying something that would make them continue being detained? And, of course, they're willing to comply. This is the battle they want. This is in the courts. They want to fight it. They know they're going to win. So they, they're not running, and they're not going to hurt anybody in the meantime. They've got babies and, and wives that are out here waiting for them, and, and they need to be released. But we, the taxpayers, need to quit paying for uh, for them to sit wrongfully in these holding centers uh, you know, in our country. CCA, Nevada, Southern Detention Center uh, nets $150 million a year profit. So go Google CCA Prisons for Profit and tell me why our federal tax dollars are going to, to allow basically human trafficking to be alive and well in the United States when we talk about stopping human trafficking. Slavery is alive and well and the prisons are the new cotton fields. Well, we got a long day ahead of us yet. We've got to be back in court in just moments. It may be late this evening before we do another live update. It could be after 5 o'clock or even closer to 6, the way things are looking. So um, if that's the case, we'll try to up, we'll try to send you out a message when we're going to have that. We may get somewhere where we can sit down and actually discuss these things more in detail of what all happened today and go through our notes and take some answers maybe from the public this evening. So if you can be down here, be down here and support. Uh, keep praying for us from home. Whatever you can do, everything's appreciated. Um, yeah. Share Other these that, messages. Share these messages. Tag, tag people. Let people know what's going on in these court systems, and uh, get the message out. If you guys don't speak for them, then their voices are silenced within these prisons. We'll see you back here tonight. Thank you.